Question? All in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 Unanimous. It's gonna be close. Next on the agenda is a Uh, next on our agenda is a poll relocation hearing for Chestnut Street for Mass Electric. Mass Electric here. They are not. Okay. We will move out of order. Can I make a motion to move out of order? Second. For the water filtration plant monthly update. Okay. We'll invite Earth Tech and Mr. McGowan for it. I'd like to come forward. Oh, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Nice Gentlemen. Yeah, uh, anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Steve Small, the on-site uh, guy for Earth Tech. And uh, glad to give you another uh, uh, update on uh, the plant. We've had another uh, good month on the plant. Uh, as anybody who's driven up and down West Boylston Street can see the site work is really coming together. The uh, loam has all been screened and spread. And uh, a new site fence has gone up. You can see that's up. The gates will be installed by the end of the week. Our landscaping contractor is on site now, and he's begun the plantings outside. And he will be raking out the loam and beginning to hydro seed as soon as tomorrow. So uh, that's well along. And uh, Methuen is working on the uh, sidewalks and some of the finish work on the ramps for the outside, uh, the entrance at the, uh, the tower. Uh, paving, we still have a, a course of paving to go. We're anticipating that around the first week of July. Once we get the rest of the sidewalks poured, we'll, uh, we'll finish up the paving. I'm uh, pleased to report that Connecticut, our uh, filter supplier, has uh, had uh, a good uh, group of men on site now for two weeks. They've had uh, two guys, and this week they've had four guys, and we've uh, been actively going through the uh, the system. They've checked out all of the uh, pneumatic valves, the chemical feed pumps, and scales. So far, no glitches at all. Things are checking out uh, terrifically. Um, as you guys are probably aware, uh, uh, Gary Nataro and Bob Swetland are now on site, and they're uh, undergoing some training when the training's available, and they're looking over the shoulder at Connecticut as they uh, work on checking out the bugs of the plant and, uh, and getting it up and running. Uh, believe it or not, we have already run some water through the system uh, in reverse. We have backwashed um, the uh, filter media, so that's ready for filtering. And uh, as soon as tomorrow, we're going to be running raw water through the plant, uh, starting to set up uh, that part of the uh, system and checking for leaks on the raw water side. So the, uh, the system itself is uh, up and uh, shows uh, good promise at this point. We're no, uh, not anticipating any big problems from the filter uh, at this moment. Uh, disinfection, we started disinfecting the clear wells and the, uh, the uh, distribution piping from the North Dyke down to the plant. And the electrical contractor is uh, finishing up on some of his control wiring for the instrumentation and uh, flow meters and uh, some of the other things. So that's all in a very good shape. The plumber is on site and he's doing his finish work. He's putting in toilets and uh, plumbing fixtures. And uh, we're in pretty good shape. The, the mechanical uh, contractor has got a little bit of work to do, but we're, uh, we're moving ahead quite well. We're pleased with the progress we've seen this month. Has uh, anybody uh, got any questions regarding the plant at all? Just looks great. You're really tying things up nice. Thank you. It's starting to come together. As always, I would like to uh, extend an invitation to anybody who would like to come and have a tour of the plant to please uh, stop by at any time around 7 to 3.30 or 4 o'clock uh, every day, five days a week. So if you want to uh, have a look, please help yourself and come on out. Any questions from the board? I'll just say that I did go up, Mr. Chairman, last Thursday or Friday? Friday, about a week ago, Friday? Friday, yeah, because I was a little late there. But it, it is. It's awesome inside. It really is. Um, Connecticut, is, is all the equipment there? 
All of the equipment is now there. The volumetric feed is where the last pieces we were waiting on. That was delivered last week and was put in the building and we're, we're putting it together now. Okay. So uh, all the storage costs, I believe, from Connecticut were behind us at this point. Actually, a couple other things the generators are online, oh. too. We, uh, both at the plant and at the North Dyke. So uh, yeah, right. we can get rid of We've been renting a generator down at the North Dyke, and that's done nice. as of last week. So the, the new generator's online, so, which is a good thing. Very good. Getting there. Uh, to go along with the progress from the past month, I have a payment application for May. And you received copies of that ahead of time. There was, we had received it Monday, so we hadn't had a chance to thoroughly look through it. Since then, uh, there was one item where on change order work, uh, the contractors allowed a certain percentage markup mm -hmm. on the items. On change order seven, the, there was an item set aside that encompassed the entire markup for that entire change order. And for whatever reason, they build beyond the value of that line item. So we brought it back in line. And that's, so we made that change on that, okay. the, the official copy. So the um, payment application number 31 is for uh, $478,028.20? Yes. Okay, and it's been reviewed by you guys and Chris? Yeah. And, okay. What's the uh, pleasure of the board regarding payment application number 31? Second. Is there any discussion on that? Okay, none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Notice. Okay. And you had a, also you had a change order, right? Yeah, this change order uh, number 14. Uh, you know, this thing the change items that are <coughs> be in your packages. And most of the work relates to the residuals in the buildings. Uh, work beyond just the site work. It encompasses the electrical work associated with that. Uh, that was roughly $40,000, all those miscellaneous uh, lagoon items. And then the other large item on that was the fencing. Uh, we became aware or brought to our attention that the existing fencing that we've been out on the site was temporary was strictly identified in the contract as a construction fence and so the uh, vendor wanted to take that. Mm -hmm. And so that change order reflects a negotiated price for to leave three quarters of it roughly in place around the two sides in the back. And then the front side is being replaced with black vinyl, uh, which I think looks great out there. Mm -hmm. They're also repairing the, the temporary fence that was in there. Yeah. You know, there are some you know, trees fell on it and they can yeah. repair all that so that it'll all be intact at the end of it also. How is that impacting the overall budget, this change over here? I mean, it's it's within it at the point, but still it's... Still within okay. we're, creeping, we're creeping on it, but we're, um, we're confident we're, okay. we're safe. So. Yeah. Two different phases. We've been, we've been updating that and I've been checking with the accountant. It's getting close. And I've been checking with the accountant every month uh, after the pay records go in, getting an updated uh, actual cost that she has um, applied to the project and uh, checking that with what we know we have coming in for future bills and we're still we're still within our budget so. okay it's the uh, pleasure of the board for change order number 14. so move second any questions being none uh, all in favor aye, aye. aye. yes yeah, right here right So I guess just one more thing on the plant. Once we do get uh, water running through it, which we do expect within a couple of weeks and get all the bugs ironed out, we'll, um, we have to get the DEP to sign off on it. That's the last thing that have, has to happen before we actually turn it online and, and are using it on a daily basis. So generally speaking, in this, this uh, central district, they're pretty quick about it. So you know, we, we think we can get that very quickly. And, um, and you know, our portion of it should be done by, by the target date of June 30th, right around there, July 1st, and uh, okay. then it's just a matter of getting DEP in, and, yeah. and they've already been notified, they know what's happening, and uh, yeah. so they'll be out, we can hopefully just turn it on and keep it going. Yeah. So great. hopefully a month from now, the plant will be in operation, so we see you guys 
Yeah, next time we see it, we're, we're hoping DEP's approved it and it's online. Right. So. We'll plan a ribbon cut. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right, kid. That's a gale house. <laughs> no, I don't have to go there. To stay up at the, the rate of the plant. <laughs> yeah, that's I have one item, Chris. Go ahead. Any other? Uh, yeah, I have one item. Uh, my name is Bob Bell. I'm the project manager for Earth Tech for the board members that I haven't met. I did meet Robert, but I haven't met <coughs> Joseph yet. I have a housekeeping item. Our, our contract ran out June 1st, and uh, on the upside, it doesn't affect the money on the job, but I need to extend the time. And what I would like to do is, uh, for the board's consideration, I believe maybe by your next meeting, is to extend the time period for our basic construction phase services and Steve services uh, for the for the uh, basic services out to about October 15th. I'm guessing we'll be done with all of our closeout paperwork and all of that. And with Steve services, middle to middle of July, maybe you know I'm probably budgeted out till end of July. Just I'm going to reallocate money that we didn't spend with subcontractors. Uh, PSI was a subcontractor and Sousa True and just kind of reorientate the money just so that the paperwork follows what we're doing. So we need to okay. do that, particularly with the with the SRF funding. So okay. I just wanted to give you a heads up on that and on the upside that the upset limit, uh, money doesn't change. It's just a reallocation of who gets what and, and when. So uh, I just wanted to be able to tell the board that tonight. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Oh, guys. You're welcome. Joyce, you want to check with Mike if the mass electors coming into their poll here? Clinton uh, Fire Department to talk about the Clinton fireworks. The People's Fireworks. Is yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Yes. All right. Mike. Good evening, board. Good evening. Michael. Mike Sislak, Paul O'Connell. Uh, just to give you a heads up on the fireworks for July 9th. Uh, the rain date will be the Sunday following on the 10th if it okay. happens to rain us out. Fortunately, we've been lucky so far. Um, We've got the state trooper, Dan Clark, coming for entertainment. For He'll be here for a couple hours. We haven't locked in the exact time when we'll have him up. Uh, donated by Night Bro. Um, and we're just up to basically give you a heads up and see if the Civic Fund can help us in any way as they have in the past. There'll be food and vendors there. Um, and any donations can be made to the uh, Fireworks Committee at 555 Main Street, Clinton, Mass. Okay, so uh, number one, it's July 9th, Saturday, July 9th. July 9th. Yep. It'll be entertainment. Yep. Uh, It'll be at the Veterans any, Field Complex. Anybody that would like to contribute should contribute to? The Fireworks Committee, okay. 555 Main Street, Clinton, Mass, okay. 0150. That's personal people, families, or businesses? In, anybody that wants, yep. Anybody in in wants. town or out of town, because yep. I know there's a lot of people from out of town that we don't reach. Um, yeah. They're welcome. I know, I know you folks aren't using telemarketers or things like that. Right. So Everything's it's, been done by So everybody that donates mail. goes right towards the, yep. the cost of the, the Exactly. The no show, telemarketers at all. And great. then that goes back to the Little League, the Scouts, the Christmas party for the seniors, yep. you know, whatever. Yeah. You know, they send down, we send back out. So Very good. Um, I know, I believe, Joyce, we have $1,000 in our civic fund. Um, and the police is not, they're not going to be able to donate the amount of time and dollars that they've done in the past because they're short. Correct. So, uh, what's the pleasure of the board as far as contributing to the, uh, the departments of the unions? Facilities? I make a motion we donate $100. In the past, probably done, we would probably do 1000 Oh, fine. Go ahead. Just to help offset the, uh, $1,000. I changed my motion to 1000 
<laughs> that just did in line and apologize. Beautiful, go. Not letting you know that. Um, so that being what's left. I was being conservative. Yeah. Thank you very uh, so much. So motion has been made and seconded to donate a thousand dollars towards the uh, people's uh, fireworks on July 9th out of our civics fund. Is there any other uh, discussion? No, just that they do a really great job and it's a nice time for they the They do family. a bang-up job. Yeah, they do Thank a bang-up job. Thank you. No pun intended. Hopefully everyone comes. <laughs> Um, hey, hopefully everybody has a good time. It's still early too. It's We're going to try to keep everything on one side of the street this year. Okay. Um, there'll be specific parking for handicapped. Um, last year we had a couple of RVs and stuff. We're going to try to keep them across the street. Are you going to be able to use the concession stand from the school? Uh, we've asked, really in the past, asked in the and past, but that not. belongs to the Lions, I believe. Yeah, the they run that, oh, and okay. we've asked if they've wanted to do it, and they didn't want to get involved. Uh, Talk of the Town usually provides the food for us, and they're interested in it again. Because it's year. a nice facility, you know, for you guys to use. It's know, beautiful, so. but the yeah. problem is once you open the gates, then you open the gates to the field, and yeah. I know they don't want anyone to run on that field. Trying right, to keep the bleachers in that, yeah. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it's worked the last year, so we'll build on it from this year. And we appreciate what you guys have done for us. Okay. Um, vote on that uh, motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you, very much. Thank you very much. Wish you great weather. Good time. Good turn Hope up. to see you all there. All right. Take care. Thank you. See you, Mike. Thank you. Mike, do we need Mass Electric for this poll hearing? Or can no, it's up to the board. <clears throat> They've actually, they usually themselves ask to have something here. Um, yeah. But it's cool if they don't want to send something to the board. It's just it's not a big deal. It's no. Uh, okay. So uh, um, we'll go back to the uh, poll hearing, uh, relocation hearing uh, for Chestnut Street. We'll open up the hearing. Uh, the description is a relocation of the poll, poll number 1JO poll, on Chestnut Street beginning at the point of approximately 45 feet south, the center line of the intersection of Lake Nav, and continuing approximately 60 feet in the northerly direction. So that's the pole they want to move. So instead of making 45, going 60 feet down. Any questions from the board? Okay. Better. Public hearing. Anybody have any comments, uh, either pro or con, in regards to the relocation of a pole? Mass Electric, being none, close public hearing. All in favor of allowing Mass Electric to move this pole? Aye. Yeah. Is there a motion? Make a motion that we allow Mass Electric to move the pole, Mr. Chairman. Any further discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 719. Why don't we go into uh, motion to go out of order and go into administrative business? So moved Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. FY 2005 budget transfers. Mike, why don't you describe what you've... Sure. I passed out tonight to the board a spreadsheet uh, of some transfers to get to the end of the year. We've been working uh, with the town account for several days on this, trying to get all the departments and the needs to close out the year to save us from having to have any unpaid bills or a special town meeting. The law allows from recent change in the law allows for FY04 and FY05 for the Board of Selectmen to make transfers within line items in the last two months of the year in order to balance out the budget. Uh, we don't know if the legislature is going to authorize this for the future, but it's really worked out well, I think, for our town, and I've heard from other towns that have used it, that it's really helped them balance things out and not have to go on pay bills or town meeting and add other expense. So you'll see a list here. What I put together was each department, or each line item, which is grouped by departments. On the left-hand side, the line item and how much they're looking for. And then on the right-hand side is a corresponding uh, recommendation for the accounts in order to transfer money, in order to make up the difference of what they want for each, for each department. So as we go through, uh, the board has any questions on those. It nets out equal. So there's available money in accounts that would be unspent on the right-hand side, which is then being asked to transfer to those accounts on the left-hand side in order to uh, allow all bills to be paid for the remainder of the fiscal year. 
Yeah. It's a pleasure to board. And, and in between the middle, there's some reasons, some basic reasons why uh, they're looking for these amounts. Uh, we have some insurances, uh, Medicare, Medicare tax, uh, unemployment, uh, unemployment tax, Medicare tax, some insurances that were high numbers. Those are some of the higher numbers of the bunch, um, which are costs we have to. The unemployment tax is, a, is based upon the percent ratio from the state. Medicare tax is based on payroll. Some of those numbers have been increased for the FY06 budget, so hopefully it'll come closer to budget for next year, but those are the deficits that we're gonna have um, for, for this year. Uh, some departments are covering their expenses with their own line items within the department, just moving money within the department in order to put where they need it. Uh, and then there are a couple of expenses which were uh, unbudgeted for, anticipated some borrowing costs for the recent bonding that was done in, uh, in, in the end of April. Um, you'll see in the treasurer's budget there. Um, those are some of the big numbers. So, but they're all, they're all costs that are incurred, even some of the expense items, their, their costs that are outstanding that will either turn into unpaid bills uh, and stuff that needs to be paid. The, yeah, the, the, it's pretty much mostly there, there, there's uh, personnel, insurances, uh, fixed costs that, that, that have to be paid one way or the other. There's not a lot of discretion in there uh, as to things that are just being spent, asking for extra money to spend things, or things that are, you know, phone bills and monthly charges that, that have to be covered one way or the other. So. Okay, and the bottom line is it nets out. We, we had extra money and additional funds, and it's just a matter of transferring. Right. So Chairman, what's the I'll pleasure of the Chairman, I'll make a motion that we accept these transfers that the town administrator has submitted to us. A second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, the only discussion is uh, this may be the last physical year we're able to do this. Exactly. I'm hoping that we... Uh, last month there was a meeting up in uh, Gardner with the lieutenant governors and she invited some of the area town officials. And some other, other communities brought this issue up to the lieutenant governor at that meeting. So there are other communities that were interested in, in keeping this authorization going. She said that she was going to go back. There were some legislators there as well. They were going to go back and take a look at it and see if they could keep it going. It just saves a step for municipalities as far as being able to handle unpaid bills. Exactly. Yeah. So. And, and this then, uh, the selectmen make the transfers and it just needs concurrence by the finance committee. Um, and in the event that uh, these do go through the finance committee, I have a meeting set up next week to review them and it just requires that they just uh, ratify your, your changes. So okay. what happens in the future? In the future, we have a special town meeting where we have to pay on the town. Yeah. All we would have is the finance reserve fund where they could use whatever money they have. Once they're out, then it would be a state business. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank the town council. She spent a lot of hours on coming up with the numbers and finding the accounts to move to and talking to the department. Good. Thank you. Okay, next we have the Old Home Day um, Committee. The Old Home Day Committee is requesting permission for the following items. Uh, use of the Town Hall restrooms for September 9th, uh, Saturday, September 10th, during uh, the Old Home Day event in Central Park. Uh, they also uh, want to be able to utilize the Town Hall Auditorium in the event of inclement weather. Um, they'd like to close off Walnut Street. Um, to, uh, from church to Union on uh, September 9th at 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. on uh, September 10th. Uh, they want to close off, excuse me, on the 9th, I believe. Uh, and then on Church Street uh, from Walnut to Chestnut on the 9th at 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. on the 10th. Uh, so two, two days of closed off streets. Uh, they also want to close off Union Street from Walnut to Chestnut from September 10th at 12 a.m. to 6 p.m. on September 10th. They also want permission to hang notices in front of the parking spaces along these streets notifying the car owners of the scheduled street closings. Cars will be towed if not moved by the time stated. Permission to allow the fire department to provide water to fill up the support barrels for the tents erected in front of town hall. What's the Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we allow the request for the uh, old home day committee. Is there a second? Second. Discussion, yeah, just to make sure that we uh, notify the 
Seventh-day Adventist Church was next to us because they congregated on Fridays and Saturdays, so it'd be nice to oh, yeah, yeah. plan accordingly. So noted. If we could, Joyce, if we can get a memo out from the selectman's office that those street closings will be occurring. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Clinton Community Theater is requesting um, the ability to erect a banner across High Street to advertise the upcoming production of Red Hot and Coal. Uh, from 6.20 to 7.30, there are some conflicts with this date. Do we know what this conflict yeah, is? Yeah, what is that? It's got to be. It's all month. Well, does Mike know? I believe Probably conflicting the with the band. Fireworks, right? Fireworks, maybe? 7.10, 7.9, 7.10. They were only requested to receive for banners. They didn't request that, right? Not that I'm aware of. I guess we have to find out what those are before, uh, the whole, what is that, the whole, the whole month at the end of this. Is that right Well, why don't we, uh, if it's for, I think it's the fireworks, uh, the show's not until the end of July, correct? Great. Dates are 722 to the 30th. They would like the banner up from June 20th to July 30th. July 22nd, 23rd, 29th, and 30th. Why don't we approve the banner after the fireworks, in case it's a conference with the fireworks? So move. So allow it from so the 11th on? July 11th to July 30th. Is that okay with the rest of the board? Sure. They're not going to want to put it up and then take it down and put it back put up. Put it back up. Right. Right. You need that motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion. We, hang, we allow them to hang the banner July 11th through July 30th. Second. Any further discussion? None all in favor? Uh, aye. We have the police. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Uh, do police, we have fire, the yeah, police fire and uh, EPW reports. Motion to accept. So moved, Mr. Chair. Any discussion? Just I would like to thank Mr. McGowan for, on behalf of the neighbors of Nashville Street and Grove Street, they did a fantastic job patching up the road this week. I well, appreciate their efforts. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm still working on maybe cutting this down a little bit. Um, i working with the police chief a little bit more than the last one. Okay. I, I showed you that piece of paper that I passed yeah. with the board. So. Yeah. We are still working on cutting them down a little bit. Very good. So most of the men seconded all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion is moved. We will uh, at 7.30 back onto the agenda. We have a informational update if the, uh, regarding 6 JFK Ave, regarding dog ownership. Parking. Is Ms. Kuki here? If everyone could please state their name and address for the secretary. Lisa Drukey Larson, 9 Hoof Street. Attorney Edward A. O'Brien III for the Law Offices of Joseph Lucier, 484 Main Street, Worcester, MA, 01608. Anita Drukey, 6 GFK, Clinton, Mass. Jones. Address? Uh, 484 Main Street, Suite 421. Yeah, what was your name, sir? I'm sorry. Joe Lucier. Lucier. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you, sir? Uh, if, before we begin, if I may say, uh, you have a very lovely town. Uh, this is the first time that I've been to the town of Clinton. Um, uh, absolutely magnificent drive coming up Route 70, passing by in Wachusett mm -hmm. Reservoir. Thank you. Um, I'm envious. So. It is a beautiful community. We thank you for the compliment. I got a house for sale by the, by the <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we'll, we'll take that under advisement. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, we've asked you to come back uh, tonight, Mrs. Ruby, because of continued complaints regarding uh, your dog barking mm -hmm. um, and some of those complaints coming in after 11 o'clock at night. Um, so we wanted to give you an opportunity to speak as to what's going on with the dog. Um, we also got notice from the uh, gentleman that was training the dog that he has since stopped that process with you and had recommended the uh, dog be relocated. So we'd like to hear from you as to what your plans are with the dog and um, the status, basically. Um, if, if I may, um, which is why I'm here today. Um, if we may go back, um, currently right now, I'm understanding that this initial process, if we can just go through a quick, quick procedural history. Um, the initial issue was two neighbors made um, an issue out of the alleged dog barking. A complaint was issued based on one neighbor, okay, in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 140, subsection 157, which is the dog, vicious dog slash sick person statute. Complaint was issued and we go from that point without getting into the entire lengthy procedural history. Um, the reason why Mrs. Strukey is here today is to discuss remedial issue that has taken effect and what effect that remedial issue has had on the issues surrounding whether or not the dog is an ongoing barking, which is obviously the, the point of the board for today. Mrs. Strukey has hired a dog walker. The dog walker's name is Colleen O'Toole. She's been walking the dog for approximately two months, yeah. approximately two months now. Taking the dog out in the afternoons, walking the dog, giving the dog possibly the exercise it needs to be able to, uh, in accordance with the veterinary uh, recommendation, to be able to alleviate some of maybe the stress or the anxiety of the dog. That's part one. Part two is currently the dog is undergoing direct veterinary medicine. We have a letter from the veterinary board, or excuse me, not the veterinary board, excuse me, the veterinary office stating that the dog is under care, the dog is receiving medication, and the medication is obviously, uh, excuse me, the medication is for the purpose due to renal failure, kidney failure, and some type of renal problem that the dog is having, which may have been the reason why the dog possibly was barking. Uh, pain, uh, some type of anxiety, coupled with the medicine seems to be working to be able to stop the dog from barking. Also, it's curbing the dog's ability to go to the bathroom at night, which has been uh, one of the issues that have been raised in the past. So the veterinarian looked into it and was able to correct that situation. Um, last but not least, these effects or these remedies or these issues that Mrs. Strukey is presenting before this board should have an effect, cause and effect in essence. What, if any, results do we have thus far? Well, number one, we don't have a police call or a police log, and at the very least, 60 days presented on the Clinton Town, or excuse me, the Clinton Police Department's call log. So, for example, a call log means somebody makes a call, somebody makes a complaint, car rolls out to the house, and makes an investigative inquiry. They record the call. It's there to be reviewed for the public. We don't have that. Uh, number two, I'm understanding that it's possibly the issue of one neighbor to come forward, and there's one neighbor that's spurring this on. Now, Mrs. Drukey is not here to point the finger. So what do we have to say that there may be refutable evidence to the contrary to what one person says? If I may. This was a letter of Michael and Stephanie Cerruti. May I present it to the board? Sure and a letter of two parts signed the same letter. Thank you.
I believe one of the copies only is four. Yeah, it might yeah. be four. Yes. Give us a second to read these. Absolutely. Yes, I did. You can continue. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I apologize. No. Thank you. To highlight the June 14th letter of Michael and Stephanie Cerruti, 13 JFK Avenue. <clears throat> I've been a resident of JFK Avenue for five years and have never had any problem with the dog in question, meaning Mrs. Drukey's dog. Um, currently, the perceived perspective that this dog is causing the biggest problems in this neighborhood is ludicrous. Black and white, signed. Michael and Stephanie Cerruti, uh, without getting into the whole letter, yeah. repeating it. Okay? Yeah, that's fine. Looking at the letter signed by both parties, the Wheelers and the Nicolis, we want to voice our concerns that you are having about your pet dog, Rocco. Um, we happen to be pet lovers. To go into, just highlight some of the things within the letter. They disbelieve in essence, based on paragraph, the third paragraph on the bottom without reciting it. Um, they obviously disbelieve what this one neighbor is saying. Um, these are both neighbors that are from the immediate area. Now, these are just letters alone. People who have signed these letters, people who have come forward just on the letter alone. Sometimes actions speak louder than words. Seated behind me are Cindy Snyder and Jeff Snyder, abutting neighbors, also, Julia Dixon is an abutting neighbor. Now, they're willing to come forward here today. They're willing to sit at this microphone and say that we are the abutting neighbors to the left, to the right, to the front, to the back, and to say we've never had a problem with Mrs. Drukey's barking dog. Cutting to the core of the, the issue. We're not even going there, so we don't need to talk about the vocal cords or anything. Yeah, we're not. No, part of this. This is this. Listen, I, rather than this could go on. This is not a hearing. Sure. Number one. So this is an informational uh, discussion that we wanted to have. Absolutely. With the status of the dog, and what we need to do, just so that there's a, a point of clarity here, is we need to respond to the complaints as a board. We have to listen when the citizens of this town come forward. We have to act on it. 
and our dog officer acts on it. Sure. So um, obviously we don't act on uh, folks that are having complaints. We not know about it. No one calls up and says, my neighbor has a great dog. We never hear that call. We hear sure. the dog complaints regarding barking or biting and loose dogs and whatnot. So we, we act as a board here uh, to a citizen's complaint in regards to a barking dog. Um, now, during the hearings in the past that we've had, the, the abutting neighbors have an opportunity, or if we have to have a hearing in the future, we'll have an opportunity to come forward and testify that they don't see an issue with the dog. But tonight's not a hearing, so I don't think we actually need to hear from any of the neighbors in regards to whether or not the dog is barking. What we have is we do have a complaint that's come forward from a neighbor uh, regarding the dog barking after hours. We also have the dog trainer back in April sending us a letter saying the dog was let out you know, from midnight to 1.30 in the morning and was barking. Uh, so, and that was with the conversation between that dog trainer and the dog owner per his letter. So that, that's what we're going with, okay? Um, so it's been an ongoing issue regarding the dog. The police have come to the neighborhood where the dog is still out at night in the past. So we've had issues, we know the dog's out, um, sure. and we've had some neighbor or neighbors complaining regarding the dog barking. Um, and the police have responded in the past. Um, so we wanted to get a status as to at least making you aware of the, the dog, the dog barking during the day is a, just a dog barking during the day. And we're not wanting to take any kind of actions in regards to that. But a dog being left out in the middle of the night is something we're not going to be able to tolerate. Just we can't. The dog being left out and barking and causing a disturbance is, is something that, based on the history that we've been dealing with, we're going to have to have a hearing. So. Mr. O'Brien uh, talked about both those issues. The two complaints that you're bringing forward or suggesting came back from March and April. You asked what is uh, Mrs. Strupe done since then. She's taken remedial actions to make sure that the dog is not barking, either at night or is outside during the night, during the night time. Those remedial actions have had an effect as to, um, as to any complaints. I don't believe there have been any complaints that have been leveled in the last 90 days. The last complaint that was leveled was back in March. We, we, have, we have a response to the Board of Selectmen. Um, from June 6th. <coughs> 60 days. 60 days. Um, but also, um, I don't know if I'm out of line. This, this wasn't reported to the police, so it's hearsay. Mm -hmm. well, she said she didn't bother to call the police. I spoke to Steve when I reported yeah, The next day at 7 a.m. Why didn't you call the police that night? I'm tired of waiting for taxpayers' dollars. You walk through all the time. That's what they're there for. It's already in process. I take that as hearsay. I would like to see a police report. Okay. <laughs> so, so the direct question you had was, you wanted an update as to the status of what's going on with the dock and whether or not things are happening to remediate what the issues are. What we're doing today is sitting before you and saying, not only have we demonstrated that we've taken remedial action, We've given you concrete answers as to what the remedial action is, and we've also demonstrated to you what some of the effect is. In addition to that, we have supporters from the community itself in adjoining houses or in abutting neighbors who will tell you that what had happened in the wintertime is not what's happening now. Now, the comments that were made by the dog marker could easily be associated to something that is an unsatisfied trainer, and he came up with his own conclusions. Now, understand what firestorm there was here three, four, five months ago when we had news agencies knocking on everybody's door and trying to get comments out of this town as to what remedial actions were going to be taken. I think since that time, we've seen a marketable drop-off in not only the number of comments, but the positive actions of Mrs. Strookey in resolving the issue. She wants, she is, and she wants to be, and has been a, uh, a very good neighbor in this community for a long period of time. If you take an isolated incident of six months or three months or four months in which there's a distraction as a result of a dog and propound that over a period of 20 years in which she's been a citizen in this community, you take a micro shot at what the reality is. And I think, I think we've shown by even coming here today 
Mr. Strunke had no obligation to be here, informal or otherwise. This woman has, has been compounded by most of the media and everyone else. But she's come forward to say, hey, I've done something. Okay. I gotta be honest with you, I'm tired of talking about your dog. Sure. We, you know, we, we spend a lot of time doing a lot of different things up here. And the most aggravating thing we have to deal with is barking dogs. So I want the dog issue resolved. And I think the most important thing for you to do is to maintain the course of action that you're doing, which is corrective action, and you, you're working with a vet to make sure the dog is well, you're walking the dog. The dog has to stay in in the middle of the night. Okay. And if we have complaints, I suggest to the neighbors that want to complain that they do log their calls to the police department and to the dog officer, and they begin to rebuild their, their trail of calls and log. Uh, and if it does occur, there will be a dog hearing. You will be required to show up, and we'll take action. But it's positive news that you're, you're taking tonight, and I applaud you for that. But at the same time, you know, we have to do our due diligence. If the reports are there and the police respond, we're going to act because we've been dealing with your dog now for four or five months. And uh, I appreciate the, the positive steps that you've taken to, to fix the situation. So, uh, Any other questions from the board? Yeah, I have one question because um, I like the dog do bark with the weather. So cat meow, cat do meow, like I said. And I'm well aware of that. Cat and dogs do that. Sure. But it's also we also have a responsibility to, uh, to other people that we can't let the dog up in the middle of the night. So if that has, has happened in the past, we need to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. It sounds like we're doing that so it doesn't happen. But I think it's just, it's just important. You know? We have a lot of things to worry about. Uh, no one here hates animals. You know? Sometimes the perception gets out there that we hate these dogs and stuff like that. That's not the case. We just want to make sure that we do it right by everybody. Everybody's interest is respected and everybody's interest is covered. Just want to make sure that we resolve in time and fashion. The, the issue you have tonight is that the, the complaints that have been made over the last month have not been made in the formal process that they need to be made for sure. them to have a hearing for us to act upon sure. properly. So be put on notice that if those complaints do get logged and they find the dog in violation being out in the middle of night barking, they being the police or the dog officer, we will hold a hearing. <coughs> okay? So. That's all I have to say. Mr. Chen, is there a good enough statement? Well, it's not a hearing, so we, we don't need to. I understand that, but they say that all the time on your part, you said you don't have a hearing about it. You heard from the neighbors, then maybe you get to say you have well, to spend more time on it. But it won't. If there's a formal complaint and it's logged with the police department, and we have you to have a hearing. I just wanted to be interested in hearing from any of the neighbors who live adjacent to it, it, it sounds like it's all positive right now. And what I guess I, I'd say is, I, I'm sure you're going to say that the dog isn't a problem. But it, 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 I, mean, I don't understand. You'll have to come back if there's a hearing. Do you? Okay? You'd have to come back and testify for a hearing. It is a waste of your time to be here tonight. Actually, wait a minute. If, if I may. If, if I may. If I may. Would. Um, is it possible I could consult with somebody after the hearing to receive some type of email to be able to email the you general can email? The solicitor. Email the general, just to the general mailbox, I say, uh, email box, so to speak, of the town. To whom? For the town. To Mike Ward or to the solicitor? To uh, Mike, Mike Ward. Solicitor. Mike, Mike Ward. Ward. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So In case neighbors would like to write a letter. Just for, for point of clarification, the reason I'm not taking public comment or, or having people speak one side or the other side regarding this dog is tonight is not a hearing regarding the dog. It was an update from you as to what's going on with the dog. Sure. If there's issues with the dog, we'll have a formal hearing. Your neighbors that are, you know, strong believers that the dog is well behaved and not an issue would be encouraged, hopefully by yourself or your attorney, to attend those hearings or that hearing and likewise those that complain. But it's not going to blow up into a big hearing tonight because it's not a formal hearing. Sure. And that's why I'm not allowing or asking for people's comments. It doesn't, no one's comments are valid tonight, I guess, if you would, as far as a decision, if a decision was made someday down the road, one way or the other on the dog. So that's why it's kind of a pointless to go forward. Yeah, yeah I think, Mr. Chairman, I think the, the town, the selector needed to hear what was going on because the office is still getting calls. And the last report was the dog was going to be found in another home. So I think what happened in the last month or two or whatever, I think this letter needed to hear that. I know that. So that everybody's up to date and on the same page as to what the owner is doing, what measures the owner is taking. 
so now your goal is to keep your dog correct and just hopefully keep it inside and again a lot of that is disinformation that's right. been put through the rumor mills rather than we've called your office mr ward we've talked to you you have communication with us we've called the town solicitor he's been gracious enough to call us back several times we've had Absolutely. communication with him if you if Neighbors have complaints. They want to call us. We're willing to address it and do whatever we have to no, do. No, if neighbors have complaints, I encourage them to call the police and the dog office. I don't disagree with you, Mr. Chairman. But what I'm saying is that there's open lines of communication on both sides. That's how you resolve the problems. The, if there's disinformation that you're hearing or parts of information you're hearing and you want to know what the information is, feel free to call us. We're, our door is open. And we're willing to, you know, if you have concerns, we're willing to address them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the Gentlemen, thank That's you good. very much. Good. Is State Representative not coming tonight? Paul said he uh, had a, I guess, a trial that he was going to have a trial. Oh, I can't. Okay, what's the next stuff going on? All the new business, Mike? It's going through all the new business. The first item is the board of election a letter uh, police commissioner's letter of resignation from police officer David Cravati that he will be leaving town service and uh, wanted to inform the commissioners of that fact and also would ask uh, that the board contemplate a leave of absence for him uh, he is leaving to join the Massachusetts State Police we wish him well and congratulate him on that on that selection and during that period that he's going through that recruitment process, he's asked uh, the town for consideration that he get a leave of absence for his position here with Clint Police Department. First of all, I'd like to uh, wish Officer Cavady the very best uh, in health and well-being uh, in his new, hopefully new position with the state police and also with his uh, new son that was born last week. So. We wish him the very best, and uh, we thank him for his uh, almost 10 years of service uh, with the community. Um, in regards to the uh, leave of absence, uh, what's the pleasure of the board? I know, um, Dave, I'm not sure if you'd like to come forward. Yeah, you want to come Change from eight to six months. I'm going to bring that up right now. Yeah. I'm going to bring that up. <coughs> Hi, Dave. David, congratulations. Thank you very much. On both, as Max said, that's awesome. Dave, I have one question regarding the uh, what the academy has to. Does it take about six months to get through? Yes, 25 weeks. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I guess if we're going to talk the leave of absence, I, I think that I would support something closer to six months than rather a year. Um, it, oh, God willing, and, and you do pass the academy and he gets through it, and, and well over six months he's going to be working with the state police, so I don't think he needs a period of one year, but uh, I, I would certainly support a six month leave for him during his academy time. Okay. Any other questions for Dave? Or comments? Is that amicable to you, David? Excuse me? Six month leave, is it amicable to you to change that to a six month? Absolutely. I would support yeah, that. that form of motion. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion. Just a second. Yeah. <coughs> Allow the six month leave of absence to cross your way. Most of the main and second, are there any other comments or questions? Uh, I, have, I have a question. Uh, did Chief have any input in this, Mike? Well, I think his, his concern, I think he expressed it in different forms, uh, that having uh, the position tied up for a year I think would, would really tie his hands. Uh, for a long period of time. Uh, he said Officer Cabady was a wonderful officer. He'd be the first one he went to hire back if need be, but tying up the position for a year was was a long time. So uh, anything less than that, I think he would 
he would appreciate it. Steve, I, I spoke with the chief. What do you think? His sentiments were that a yeah, year was basically too long for that reason. Is once he's out of the academy in six months, there, there's no longer a reason for him to be even employed or have anything to do. But anything less than that, he was uh, he wasn't against. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be, be, be honest with you. I, I think that six months is a lot. I think that uh, I don't have anything. And I appreciate your service, Dr. You've done a great job. Thank you. 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 Thank uh, I didn't actually bring up the six month period, but he, he wasn't happy with the year, but he said if there was something lower than that, it could work. Uh, as far as hiring the time frame, Steve, I think it takes, it'll it's take longer than six months to hire on someone. I mean, <coughs> pulling off a list and... Well, if you pull, especially pulling off a list and they don't have the academy, you're looking at... Right. You're looking at a while. So 20 I, weeks right there. I, I thought that in, uh, I think six months is within a time frame that doesn't hamstring us as a community, and it affords uh, Officer Kavady, who did 10 years of service, close to 10 years of service, a little bit of uh, security as he goes through the academy. Okay. Uh, that he can come back. Plus, he has, I think, six time if he needed to, that could sap our resources pretty extensively. Yeah, so I think he's right. helping us in one sense. The, the big thing, I guess, is that if he did pull out the civil service list and they weren't academy trained, they yeah, then no, have no. to go through an academy, so it would be that. My, my concern is the question of equity. Are we, if we do this for one, are we willing to do this for other people? Right. I know from the past we didn't do it for somebody. Right. Yeah. And I just want to be sure that if we're going to do this, we'd be equitable across the board. I think it's fair to do it across the board. Yeah, yeah I think so I think every situation you have to look at the... Board for, uh, this may be a time to put something like this in the negotiation forum because in the school department, the school department allows for a year's paid leave of absence up to two years paid leave of absence in many situations. Uh, I know you can't compare the school to other facets of the town, but this is about this it's there. right now. It happens. It's one of the more important any kind of contract. <laughs> My, my question was just, if, if we want to do that for some, everybody across the board, have a problem. Pick and choose who we're going to do it for, I have some concerns about that. I think we need to be consistent when we do things, and that's my concern. That's why probably, Steve, it's important that maybe we need to put that in the negotiation forums. Or well, we have a, a policy or procedural thing of how we do it. Each, just be consistent with everybody. Different. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's fair and equitable. That's my concern. That you know, two weeks or something else happens, and we're going to be or oh, make it nine months, make it. We be fair and consistent, just whether it's a business, whether whatever we do. That's just my concern. Okay. Any other comments or questions for Officer Kavady? Um, actually, I uh, thank you for your years of service. Also, um, you know, I come from the private sector, and um, it's a lot different there, you know? If I want to go change jobs, and I went up to my boss and I said, can I have a leave of absence? He's gonna look at me and say, there's the door, buddy, you know? I mean, I'm not trying to be mean or wise or anything, but it's- I respect your opinion. I, it, I think uh, things are a little different between public, uh, the private sector yeah. and public safety. Uh, you know, I, I think there's a big difference there as far as service and uh, not to not to belittle your you know the private sector at all, but I think there is a difference when it comes to public safety. Uh, I'm not. If it was if it was just me, mm -hmm. I would I would go go without if I had to. But I have a family that I have to have to look look out for now, and my service is going to continue with the town of Clinton even if I join the state police. Hopefully, I'll be back in this area, and my my service to the community is going to continue. Mm -hmm. I just uh, asked the board that they uh, consider what I've proposed here and uh, okay. yeah. what, what happens, uh, God forbid, if you get hurt on, in the academy? How does that affect us if he's only leaving absence? I, 
I, I, I kind of don't understand what happens there. Well, my understanding is he'd be able to come back, uh, utilize his sick time, uh, come back on light duty uh, when he's available for light duty, and then be reinstated as a regular Sunday police officer. He has hundreds of hours of sick time. Sure he does. So, I mean. I have over 700 hours on the books. Sick so, I mean, if there was a leg injury or an arm injury where he also had to leave the academy, um, you know, he'd be able to use a sick time. If he got something other than the, something that he couldn't come back. Because I'm trying to, I want to know if it's all career options. ending, that would be it's career, career ending, ending every career ending, yeah. And if he would retire, we'd have to for, uh, force retirement, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, career. The motion has been made and seconded in regards to a six month, granting a six month leave of absence. And again, the, the leave of absence is an unpaid leave of absence. It's not being paid any kind of wage at all. Uh, it's just leave of absence. Unpaid. It's an unpaid leave of absence. The motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Good luck. Very good. Dave, thank you very much. Very best Wish of luck. Best. And, uh, Especially good luck with uh, your new son. Thank you. I'd just like to say that it's been an honor serving the town and the uh, citizens of Clifton. And I've enjoyed working with uh, all the members of the police department, the fire department. We work well together. And uh, like I said, I hope to continue my service to the town and the community as a member of the state police with any luck. One more question. How much is your baby weight? <laughs> Seven, eight. Dave, just before you leave, just I want to thank you for uh, because I work so closely. I've worked with you a lot, and it's been a pleasure to work with. And you too. Thank good you. Luck. Good thank luck. Thank you very much. Be safe. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Best to you. Next, next item, Mr. Chairman, is an issue regarding the South Meadow boat ramp. The town was provided with some information by some of the activists that are involved in, in trying to maintain access to South Meadow Pond. Um, the board had in their packet different options that are available to try to keep access to the pond. Um, the Public Access Board has indicated that they're willing to uh, get involved in this process and look at some ways to, to keep all the parties happy. But one thing that they're asking, and, and not, I think not looking for a decision at all by the selectmen tonight on this, but just asking if they do work out some arrangement to maintain the boat ramp or some type of boat access to the pond, would the town be willing to get involved with assisting in the maintenance? Um, they don't have the crews which would do weekly emptying of litter barrels or, uh, you know, it wouldn't be maintenance of, of fixing or repairing the boat docks or anything, but it would just be the general clean, clean up, up and, and just kind of keeping an eye on the place uh, as police patrols or DPW emptying the trash type of thing. So the state and, and they are looking at their options and, and the parties involved that they need to deal with. One of the questions they have is, the town committed to assisting in this process to providing those type of services uh, to allow them to move forward to continue discussions to try to make something happen. Well, so, yeah, we're not looking, there's kind of a sample agreement that the state has, which would uh, obviously be subject to negotiation, uh, but at this point, uh, there's no commitment on behalf of the town board. It's just, is that something that the town would commit so the state could, could pursue, pursue this issue. Well, I would defer to our Chris. superintendent of DPW if you'd be open to picking up a little bit of additional responsibility before I made any comments. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the trash and even a, you know, small things like that. When it comes to fixing gates and removing boulders Fences and gates and stuff like that. And I think you start coming in with a little bit of money. 
I understand, that's not what they're looking for. They handle the bigger maintenance and the stuff that needs to be done like that. It's just a matter of them not being able to get out here weekly and, and we don't have a problem. So more site, site oversight, if you will. Just kind yeah, of keep oversight an eye and, and, you know, minor and tiny enough, I guess. Maybe cut back a little brush once a year or something would be a big problem. I don't have a problem with that kind of responsibility. Well, I don't either, as I long as it stays within the limits that uh, Chris just said. The folks involved, I happen to come to a meeting. The folks involved are very passionate, as are the people that live on the pond. So you have that mixed combination. But the people that um, have always longed the area are the people that are picking up stuff now, right. that are keeping it, keeping an eye on it as though it were there. So. I think we could come to an agreement with the Public Access Board. I think we can't jump into it. I think we should have Dennis review their contract and go over what needs to be gone over with. But I think it's a, a workable situation. Steve, you some comments? Yeah. I just really truly want to understand exactly what our liability would be if we're going to some type of contract. Uh, because I, I ride around town and I see it. Every year that goes by, we have more and more things we have to do, and less and less money to, to do it with. So, I'm open to look at options, but I want to make sure it doesn't cost us any more money or put more stress on, on, on DPW, on the police department, fire department. Uh, you know, we have a tough time keeping up with a lot of things right now. So, I just want to make sure it's not going to put an additional burden on what we have to do. Certainly open to look at options to see what we can do to solve and work it together, but I want to understand more specifically what that entails. And I think if Dennis looks at it and there's no liability and things of that nature, something to perhaps look at. Right. I mean, I think perhaps the, the more prudent thing to do at this point would be to find out what the proposed plan is and what they want to do. Right. So that then we can evaluate it from a town liability standpoint. Right. There are some recreational use type statutes and other statutes in the Commonwealth that would limit our liability uh, for the use of that pond that I can explore in more detail with the board. So I'd like to put a cost. Setting. Uh, you can't. You put a cost to that. Be nice. But well, I think, I, that would I be think this should be impossible. little to no cost. And right. yeah, I think exactly. I think the, the, the point under the that public this, access board thing there's very little cost. They they fund a lot of it. I think the superintendent just kind of gave a brief outline of what he thinks the responsibilities would be falling back, and it's just speculative at this right. point. Exactly. Would be basically site cleanup. Right. We don't want to see a landfill up there. I don't want to see people dumping their trash up there every week either. I think one. State, basically, what I think what they're looking for is if if you guys say we're going to wash our hands, if the state owns it, we're doing nothing up there, then they're not going to proceed any further. If you give them at least an indication, and I think it would be defined a little bit later, if you give them an indication that yeah, we're willing to do a little bit of stuff up there just so you know the community still has access, then then I think they'll at least look at different options. So and I think think more uh, uh, springboard to that to try to look at a different options. And I think it's you know our responsibility going forward, although it wasn't in the past, this is a new issue brought up. We have members of our community that want access to that bond that have had it for years. If we as a board can at least step forward and say we're willing to look at and work with the state, right. assume some responsibility with minimal cost, uh, I think we can move towards solving a problem for, for folks that you know, enjoy a you know a, a hobby or a, a recreational sport, I should say, um, and we can help solve the problem. So I, I think we should be at least open to it and uh, you know explore the, the the scope of work and and then identify some cost to it, but it should be minimal. I mean, we've got men on trucks going by that matter of stopping, making a quick pickup, and off they go. Uh, we can't really even put a price tag on that kind of time, I mean, it's, it's gonna, it should be minimal. You know, I agree with the superintendent. You know, we're not going to be there paving the ramp. We're not going to be there repairing a gate, things like that. That's going to fall back on the state, and we'd have to put that in black and white. That you know, the maintenance of the actual facility is done by, by the state. I think. Mm -hmm. You think it would be prudent to have Michael and Dennis sit down with that gentleman, that's the engineer from the uh, public access board, to see just what they're exactly looking from us? 
Oh, I don't know. I think we can just communicate that we're open to. Yeah. Yeah, I think it probably eventually would come to that. I think you know we would probably take the lead from the state as to when they're ready to do something. But as long as the town communicates they're open to working together, then they'll probably contact us for further information. But, uh, yeah, I'm open to looking at it. It's got to be a solution to the problem. You know, we can work it together. Should we solve it? Attorney Thomas. No, I, I uh, personally believe that, um, you know, it's a quality of life issue and that uh, people that want to have access should be able to have access. Uh, I understand the state, you know, may have some concerns. It's public access board, and yes, I think we should talk to them and okay. try to uh, keep it as open as possible. Okay, so why don't, why don't we have a motion to at least explore uh, a willingness to uh, support uh, the access to the pond with the state. So moving to choose. Is there a second? second? All in favor? Oh, Aye. Aye. Okay, very good. Thanks. Okay, next up we have uh, uh, Don Lowe. <laughs> Please come forward, sir. <laughs> There is a camera present, so I'm yeah, I, oh, I forgot. <laughs> Good evening, Don. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Chair, I would like to have spent quite a bit of time working with Mr. Kane, and if there's any way that my office can help in the process, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. Uh, the reason I'm here tonight, I believe you all have in your packet a request that I've submitted um, to adjust the uh, uh, working conditions uh, for Carol Leschke, who is the uh, uh, financial officer um, in my office and also uh, coordinates the day-to-day the -day activities of the uh, very successful housing rehab program that we have. Uh, my office has uh, been very, very busy for quite some time and this is actually an adjustment I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, I've held off pretty much, I feel, as long as I can. I uh, really feel strongly about adjusting Carol's hours from 32 and a half hours a week to 35 hours a week. Uh, Obviously, if you're going to adjust somebody's hours, you should be adjusting their salary as well, uh, which is why I emphasize this is a salary adjustment, not to be confused with a merit increase or a cost of living increase of any kind. If I'm asking someone to work more time, then they should be compensated for it, and uh, the numbers that I have in here would uh, are, are commensurate with uh, what, would, what would be appropriate, uh, and I am asking the board's support to uh, allow me to do that uh, effective immediately. And the increase in uh, hours uh, with then the corresponding uh, additional uh, salary would uh, be taken care of from program income, so it's not a, uh, a line item in the budget anywhere. From the That's correct. 100% of it would be covered by program income uh, from my office. It has no impact to the uh, town budget at all. Okay. Um, uh, I, I know Mr. Pasquale and Mr. Notaro being new selectmen. Um, may not realize uh, when we refer to program income in my office we have outstanding uh, loans that we do make to some people when we do housing rehab work if you're a very low income person you get a hundred percent grant uh, to get the work done if you're considered to be a moderate income person it's a fifty percent grant fifty percent loan that's paid back over a period of time so there's we have a revolving loan fund that we use for expenses in the office uh, to offset budget, uh, you know, to offset budget issues and so forth. Um, that's uh, where my salary comes from, if there's a gap between what we get in grant money and so forth. So it's it's a standard practice to use that resource for uh, for salary. Any uh, questions from the board? Yeah, I have a comment. Um, I know what you put is the need is very strong. Can you elaborate a little bit more when you say the need is very strong? I'm assuming you get more people using the, the office now? We get, uh, we have quite a few people calling both for um, uh, rehab work. Um, we get emergency calls sometimes that we, that we take. Um, I'm getting more and more calls constantly um, about people looking for space in town or wanting to know about space. If I'm not in the office, Carol does the best, she, she literally drops what she's doing, does the best she can uh, in explaining what's available. I spend a lot of time with Carol keeping her up to speed as to what is available, what's happening with various projects. So she handles a, a lot of questions for me. If, if I'm out of the office, 
working on something. She actually saves me a lot of time by being able to handle that. That's good. Great. Thank you, Don. Thank you. What's the... Uh, I'll make a, a any other questions? Being none, I was pleasure I'll make a motion. Second, Mr. Chin. Motion is to... That we uh, allow the... Uh, Salary change for the Home Economic Please. Development Office Secretary. Do you want me to list the numbers, Mr. Chairman? No, just the, from 32 from five. 32 seven to 36 zero. And usually there's 35 hours, correct? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, and then move the hours from 32.5 to 35 hours. Thank you. And Steve seconded? Correct. Any other discussion? Being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank Pretend you me. don't want me to show the 10 or 12 slides I brought with me? No, no. In fact, we really appreciate your presence. Uh, yeah, if you go back to wait for we'll be there at 10. Okay. Thank you. Wait See you, Donnie. He's following everybody. Mike, want to update the uh, WRTA bus route sure. issue? Sure. Mr. this next issue is just asking for the, the board's uh, hopefully consent and opinion on this plan dealing with the Worcester Region Transit Authority bus route to Clinton. Uh, currently, as you know, there's a fixed route service from Worcester to Clinton via Route 70 that go, comes three round trips per day in, in and out of Clinton. The WRTA has hired a consultant to look at a, a system-wide changes to their plan and they found that the Clinton bus route was severely underused I think the numbers, uh, don't quote me on them, I think it was somewhere around $111,000 it was costing to run this bus per year, and the ridership uh, was only their last count in April, they were looking at eight, eight riders per day for all three uh, round trips. So it could have been four people going in and out, or you know, five people, or 10, or whatever, but they're looking at eight, eight riders per day that are um, using the bus on those three routes. So they, they seriously looked at it. We had a hearing uh, here in Clinton. Had a lot of people in the community that spoke uh, and try to keep the service or keep public transportation for people that needed in Clinton. Uh, I've been attending the WRTA meetings and expressing our concern that we need to maintain some service for our people out here. We've had uh, the our state senator, state representative, Congressman McGovern, that have voiced their support as well in trying to maintain some type of service. Through all their discussions, they still felt strongly that they needed to accept this consultant report to, to make some system savings and try to grow their system. As part of their uh, negotiations, they, they're proposing a plan to Clinton that we use our current assessment. We, we get assessed currently, our FY04 assessment was $43,783 that we pay per year to help offset the cost of this route. It's not even half of what it costs them, but this is our assessment, and then they put in the rest based on whatever front revenues they have. So they were, they were making the pitch that we could use that assessment and run a shuttle service from Clinton to get, which the nearest bus would be to the West Boylston bus. They would eliminate the fixed route service through Route 70, uh, they have very you no know, ridership, I think, in Boylston. So they're just coming all the way out here just to meet Clinton. So what they would do is they would still, instead of running that fixed route, running all the way along 70, they would still run the same type of vehicle, the same size vehicle they're currently using in Clinton. They would still propose, as you can see on the chart that I have the pack, packet, that three round trips would cost about 43950 which would be pretty much a wash uh, they would just keep the same assessment and they would just wash out that difference. So they would still run the three round trips, they would run the same bus, they would stop at whatever routes in Clinton that we felt were appropriate, but instead of going out Route 7, they would go out Route 110 and it would meet up with the bus there at the Walmart Plaza. Uh, it would give people the option of going to the Walmart Plaza for shopping and getting the Worcester bus, which then goes to Greenville Mall and also then ends up at Worcester Center at downtown at Worcester City Hall which is the hub for their system, right. which then you can get on any bus there, go out Lincoln Street, or go further into the city, or anywhere else that they will, need to go. Will the van service that's, that does the three trips out of Clinton still stop at the hospital? Yes, that's important. They're still willing to do that um, okay. if, if, they, if need be. Um, I talked to the hospital, they don't, 
we can we can talk to the hospital further and see if they if, if they would still like to still have that. So they are willing to make okay. whatever ruling Clinton that we need them to make. It's so my understanding that would be a very good thing if they could stop it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, nobody uses it. Very few. I've seen people use it. Yeah. Okay. So what's, what's what they would do is I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, but they would uh, they would still do the downtown stop and then they would go up to the hospital by the high school instead okay. of maybe go up to the high school now. Okay. So you want us to vote on uh, maintaining the yeah the contribution as right. well. Right. The town is still willing to use that contribution to keep this service going. Uh, otherwise, the proposal was to have no service in this first year of the plan, and that in the second year they would review it and maybe do a call for call service, service type of yeah, plan, that's what which is which is very cumbersome for riders that, right. that if they know they have a scheduled service. Uh, I did get a call, very few calls, uh, next to none of the riders. So uh, I hope we're we're doing our best to try to maintain service for them. Uh, there was one woman who did use the bus who expressed very concerned about keeping the service and actually she did call me and say that she was uh, very pleased with this service to West Boylston, uh, that she can access Walmart and also that she can uh, still get a bus into Worcester. So at least one rider was happy with that resolve and, and hopefully the other rides, riders will be okay. It would just require one more transition to get to that bus. So basically we've got two options. We do this or they get no ride. Right. right. So what, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, we move forward with this plan, at least try it out, see how it works out. Okay. This is why they serve us at this point. Okay. I'll second. Second it by Joe. Uh, any other discussion? Being none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. And, and I just wanted to say that the WRT has, they have been sensitive. I think they're looking at dollars, but they're also, they are sensitive to the town's needs. They have committed uh, that if the town is, is willing to go along with this, that they will work with the chamber. They have marketing firms that they're going to be dealing with, telling people about their system-wide changes, that they'll market around Clinton to wherever points we think that we can try to increase the, the ridership and let people know the service is there. So um, they have been good, uh, although feeling badly, they're still taking this uh, measure of cutting the service, uh, but they have been doing all that they can to the best yeah. thing. Yeah. Provided something some out there. So, thank you. Mike, thanks for your time involved with that. Okay, uh, next we have a regional selectmen's meeting uh, that the West Boylston Board of Selectmen has uh, proposed a meeting for the Wachusett area uh, communities to discuss issues of mutual concern. Sounds like a pretty good idea. The, uh, the West Boston Board of Selectmen basically trying to gather the communities of the uh, kind of northern Worcester County, some smaller communities together, so we can kind of speak as one voice back to Boston sometimes. Um, and, uh, what I'd like to do is, if Selectman Mendoza would be willing to uh, sit on that that board for us, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to do it if I may. And uh, maybe you could communicate with Mike as to what days would work for you as best for meetings and the judges. Yeah. 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 So, I think it's a good idea by the West Boston Board. Sometimes the smaller communities get lost, and maybe if enough of us speak together in one voice, we can uh, get be heard. So. So. I appreciate you sitting on that. Thank you. Do you need a formal? vote Mike for us to join that or no? No, I think it's no just uh, they just wanted to some feedback that, that Clinton wanted to be involved and then it's probably going to be a big undertaking to coordinate this yeah. and how long it'll take to do it but that I can communicate back to them uh, that the board is, is uh, willing to, to right. get involved in that and, and participate. And in fact, the town administrator from West Boylston, um, we have a the WRTA meeting tomorrow morning that they were waiting to hear back the Clinton's response and the town administrator of West Boylston is on that uh, committee as well. So I'll, uh, I'll see him in the morning and I'll sure. indicate that you were, uh, you were very, very pleased and open to doing that. Yeah, and, and Steve, uh, second Bill will be our point from the board. Great, thank you. Okay, we have a, a ZBA resignation. Uh, Ed Friel has resigned. Thank him for his service. Uh, how many openings do we have on that? 
Currently, with that, with Mr. Frio, that that board was filled, uh, it will now open up an alternate position. So we have his one position that's open. Okay. Right now. Uh, at the last meeting, we did have two <coughs> candidates. There was an alternate position that was available uh, from, from a former resignation of a board member, and an alternate moved up. And then the, we created an alternate position that the board filled last meeting. But there were two letters for that position. So if the board wanted to take that remaining yeah. person and fill yeah, that slot. That. Right. That. Yeah, maybe if you could bring that, that letter back forward to our next meeting and or we'll contact and see if that person is still interested. If so, we could act on it there next meeting. So basically all that moves up to you. Is this is how it works? If, if they so choose, sometimes an alternate likes being an alternate and, and coming when needed, uh, but sometimes if they've been there for a while, they would like to move into a full-time slot. So generally, they're given the first opportunity, but it's still an appointment of the board selectmen, but they give them the first opportunity to move up into a full-time slot if they so choose. And uh, one gentleman that was in the alternate slot uh, did ask to be moved up into uh, the reserve guide and resigned and asked to be moved up to his slot. He was appointed to that, which opened up another slot, and the board at the last meeting uh, filled that position. And uh, now Mr. Friel just spent this letter last week, so now it creates another opening. Okay. You want to speak to the Homeland Grant? Sure. This, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Homeland Security Grant. It's the uh, federal FY05 local preparedness grant. Uh, there's $12,000 that's allocated to the town of Clinton. However, uh, the town has to put in a plan. We have to file uh, an application and come up with a program that fits the protocol of the different uh, strategy, Homeland Security strategies that the state of Massachusetts has adopted for use of these funds. So there's $12,000 that's available. Last year we had $12,008. Uh, we had, with the board support, had used that for, for partial funding of a radio communication tower. Uh, currently all our radios for public safety uh, communications are up at the vertical water tanks. They're on the tanks themselves. The tanks are starting to get full with all the little antennas for the different departments. And with upgrading to a, uh, the high band frequencies, it, it's really going to overtake what we have, our need is. So the, the fire chief and, and different people, the former select panthers on that committee, and, and, and the public safety, police, fire, and DPW were on that committee. And, and uh, Selectman Bazidlo was involved, and so I think Selectman knows it comes some meetings as well. That, the big push of the fire chief was to get a tower up there, a standalone tower that all these antennas could be consolidated on its own tower in order to uh, get the signal that they need to maintain the, the system. So the approximate price is, is probably a little over $20,000, and we had 12000 last year. And the hope is that the board is okay with uh, using this clause to try to match the previous year's funding that we could then maybe get the full funding to to get that tower uh, up in Berta Hill. So okay. uh, it would still need state approval. We need to come back to this board for acceptance and show sure, permitting and, and all that stuff. But just in concept, if that's an area that we could pursue, if, if the board was okay with that, or we could go back to the uh, emerging planning committee and come up with another idea. So, so. Sounds like yeah, that's smart. Right. Sounds like smart right. plan. What's the uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Do you want to continue with that that course of action? If so, form of a motion. Sure, I'll make a motion that we uh, continue the twelve thousand dollars on the loan for the uh, towards, the towards the tower for the radio. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any uh, discussion regarding this? I know Dino worked quite a bit on it. Yeah. So. Okay, so no no further discussion. All in favor of moving forward with. Uh, Applying for that grant and then utilizing the funds towards the tower. Aye. Aye. In favor? Aye. Unanimous. Next is uh, New Step Inc. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is a proposal that was submitted by a new agency. They're looking to create a human service agency here in Clinton Lancaster area. Uh, they're just starting up and they're asking the town to try to to help finance some of their insurance or rental and some of their startup costs for the company. Um, we currently pay an assessment to REIT. REIT is a human service agency here in the town that's providing uh, services. Uh, we do have regional assessments from the area of town, so we are already paying 
one agency already, so. Yeah, yeah I, I just, I, I read through it, and to me it sounds like it's a private organization trying to get into, um, you know, forms of assistance regarding education and job placement, things like that, and I applaud their efforts, but it's a private organization. Uh, and I don't believe it's our role as a community to help fund a, a lease or even their insurance. Uh, we pay for it uh, and, and help we, which is an important um, advocacy and uh, a place for people to go uh, for assistance. And that's really our community outreach. That's where we go to and, and assist, as well as try and work very closely with the item of pale and some of the other mock and, and mock as well. So, um, you know. Again, I applaud this, this corporation for what they're trying to do, but I don't think it's our role as a community to, to either pay their insurance as, uh, you know, liability or their lease space. It just doesn't fit. It's not a private, public sector scenario here. It's, I think we already have that established with we and Mark and Steve. So, you know, I'd, I'd ask the board to, to look at it and decline and any kind of support for it. I just don't think it's the right mix. So I don't know what the pleasure of the board is, but to me, when I read it, it doesn't drive with what I was saying. I, I have to concur with you that it sounds like a private organization. Yeah, yeah. Probably kind of a duplication yeah. of that for Yeah, yeah. 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 We're already well served, I think, with what we have now. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we just moved into a different location. And, you know, they're making progress with what they're doing, working hard at what they're doing. I think we should add more competition at this point. It's just tough ready. Let's keep our resources focused exactly. on what we have established. So is there a form of a motion to just notify them that we're already so move. complying or supporting an organization? Is that? Yeah, so move. That's that. You're making a motion to deny the request. That's what so move. Is there a second? A second. Uh, any other discussion? Being none, all in favor? Aye. The next item, Mr. Chairman, is just a formal letter from the EPW Union uh, requesting to enter into negotiations for a successor agreement. Uh, okay. Finalized the last meeting. We just have a brief update tonight in the executive session, uh, finalizing the agreement that was. Start formal start okay. The next is a request from the fire chief regarding banners for high streets. Uh, we are it is getting at this time of the year and, and, and I think often now where it's becoming very popular to put banners up on high street. Uh, the chief has expressed concern that it's becoming very demanding for his department. And also banners coming up and down and back up again that you know, communication with these organizations is getting difficult as well. So uh, he's not looking to ban it, but he, he's asked if maybe there could be a formal policy or a fee charge uh, to, to try and keep it in check. Well, I think the, you know, the problem with the fee is that most of these tend to be through either plays or they're public service type things. You know, we have a walk for hunger. And we're going to charge you know, the folks trying to raise money for the hungry or are we going to charge, you know, we have town meeting coming up. Uh, I, I do understand and have an appreciation for the number um, of banner requests, but at the same time, uh, they're the best equipped as far as a ladder truck and whatnot to do it. So uh, I think the main thing is maybe we try to improve the communication to the department as to when the banners need to be hung and that, you know, our office makes sure that we don't have conflicts with when the banners go up and when they come down. To your point, Mr. Chairman, or maybe the chief can provide a, a policy that doesn't require a charge of how to coordinate that effort. He can present it to us. We just, we just forget. And this would be yeah, yeah, time. he could, or we could provide a policy back to him yeah. as far as how we want to, you know, get the request yeah. down there for for. Then so. there was an issue one time that happened. At Something went up and then something got put up before. Yeah, yeah they took it down. Yeah. And then when that came down, they put theirs back up again. So yeah, that just happened. Like it's I think in the selectman's office, it, the, the issue is very well organized and, and our office here is what comes through for the selectman. But these organizations then speak directly with the fire department and you know, some people that didn't go through the proper process 
Do they realize they have to come here? Well, that's pretty down. simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's simple. That's simple. So, so, we need so I, I think the policy gets set by us, yeah. and the policy is that the fire department Doesn't hangs a banner based on a phone call from our office right. and board of select. Right. Can right. I have that in the form of a motion? I'll give you a motion, Mr. Chairman, that any banner to be hung up by anybody that we approve should go through our office and not but nobody will somebody walking down through the fire and see just like you Is there a second? Uh, second. Actually I was gonna ask if Steve could amend that yes. to uh, put a time limit, you know, that they give us timely notice if, if they want to put a banner up so that the chief can have um, you know ample time to uh, budget. Yeah to most that. of the things would right. be scheduled in well, that's, that's the approval part. Right, right. the approval, yeah. So the, 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 the motion is in regards to the process of who's telling who to hang something. Okay. And right now it sounds like the conflict is we have people that have banners going right to the fire department saying hang sure. this. And we nip yeah, that in the bud by saying to the, the, and the fire department obviously is just trying to help everybody. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and if we just clearly define the, 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 Direction to hang a banner comes only through the Board of Selectmen and not through any agency or private sector group wanting a banner hung. That way they're not running around uh, chasing these folks. So the motion was made by Steve. Um, so we can have a second. We can deal with the timeline if you want in a second. So the motion regarding hanging a banner uh, and being told when to do it from Steve is from the Board of Selectmen. And there was a second from Bob. Any other discussion on that? But none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, Joe, you had a point regarding uh, giving them at least due, due notice. Maybe it's a couple weeks before. It's yeah, I, I believe on. that whoever wants a banner hung up should give you know two, three, four weeks notice um, so that the fire department can schedule time to do it, so they don't you know get. Uh, I, I realize that a lot of it's because people go down there and um, yeah. ask them to do it, but there should be some. Formalized time limit, you know. What do you think? I'm out of time. I think a couple weeks. Two, two weeks. Yeah, finished. that's fourteen days. So you want to make that the formal motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that um, anyone that wants to hang a banner give at least two weeks' notice to the board. I'll second that. Okay. okay, that notice is to the board of selectmen, and the second is second to the Any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 It just kind of cleans up the cleans it up a lot. There is a lot. Community garden uh, program began last week in front of the park first. Uh, the town of Clinton is providing water. It's important when the garden season is over that the Clinton water that's provided gets turned off. Yes. We don't have frozen pipes. Uh, we wish them well in there growing of plants and vegetables and whatnot. Last year it looked pretty nice, actually. Uh, the town meeting warrant uh, is at the clerk's office as of Monday? Monday. Okay. The budget, too. The budget is there as well. Does anyone have any comments on the budget? Because we haven't formally voted on it, but yeah, we, we should formally we vote on it. Finance committee formally voted on it and has supplied it for the meeting. Uh, any questions on the budget? Uh, again, I think it was uh, you know, lean, kind of lean times as far as any additional resources and um, all the department heads were, you know, whether they, they were brought before us early on and brought before the Finance Committee and uh, when we had to come back for cuts, we had them come before that subcommittee. And um, I think everyone was understanding and appreciative of the efforts and what they got and are able to, I think, make, uh, make do uh, as best they can. So, and thing, yeah, you want to mention the website? Yeah, the one thing I would like to uh, say is that I, I think um, this year um, the numbers were provided, you know, well in advance of the town meeting. People have a chance to look at them. People, you should look at them. They're out there on the uh, ClintonMass.com website. They're on my website, josephnotaro.com. Please download them and look at them because you're the ones that are going to be voting on it. On, on that note, Mike, did, did my name is Tim. Yeah. Did the town what we want the book come in? The, um, the, the time reports yeah. are, uh, they, I was told that they would be delivered tomorrow. Okay, and that's tomorrow good. I'll those on hand for anyone that's looking for them as well, too. And they'll be out with the warrants at the, uh, on the table for town meeting. Great. And town meeting is on Monday, uh, June 20th yeah. at 7 p.m. Please. Uh, it is important. I mean, it's our budget that has to be approved. There are also several warrant articles 
regarding zoning issues, there's uh, bylaw changes and, and whatnot, uh, and the community and the employees of the community really require and hope uh, that you'll come out uh, and voice your opinion and ask the questions that you want to have asked and answered, and most importantly, vote and participate in, uh, in your town government. So that's this coming Monday, May, uh, June 20th at 7 p.m. So we look forward to seeing everyone here. Um, yeah, if you want to make a formal motion. Do you want to make a motion that we formalize the budget? So we put it time to get it ready. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Discussion. Discussion. Hold on. Under discussion. discussion. Yes, Does this mean, Michael, under discussion, uh, that issue I talked to you about where we're voting on the budget now, does that have an effect on my question? No. Okay. Okay. Um, so the motion was made by Steve, seconded by Selectman Buzzy. Uh, Buzzy. Selectman Buzzy. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Last thing on the new business, Central Park sidewalks. If you've driven by, obviously you can see uh, the work has begun and uh, the woods around the trees to protect the trees. A lot of people have been asking me that question. Yeah, they're doing a good job. Uh, and so we appreciate uh, that work being done and we appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Profaro in the Woodlands uh, contributing to get that done as part of his conditions. And he is uh, owning up to that. It's a costly effort. And uh, hopefully it's done before Old Home Day, I would think it would be, but on the construction special. So hopefully it's, I'm sure it will be done by then. Okay, with that, uh, is there any other old or new business? Yes. Under? Uh, under new business? Yeah. Um, I've been stopped by quite a few citizens regarding the gentleman that's working over at the recycling center. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had a pay raise in years. He's the only guy running the program. He does such an exemplary job that people don't even have to get out of their cars that are elderly. And I hope we can find it in our hearts to give him some kind of pay raise other than that of $6 an hour to do the job he's doing. And he does a remarkable job over there. I talked with Michael about it because I, I had people approach me during this hot weather, but the poor guy's over there all by himself and he's helping people. Don't get out of your car, you know, and he's not complaining about his pay. But I think we owe him a little bit of gratitude in this town to do the job that he's doing for six bucks an hour. I think we should at least try to offer him something within the realm of the recycling budget to uh, give him some kind of acknowledgement that we appreciate what he's doing for us. Okay. I, I happen to agree with that. Every time I've been up there, he's, been, he's never asked for anything. He's always been more than helpful to, to do what he has to do to help out. Um, I, I think that we have yes. some money in there. Yeah, we, we have a little, we, we try to budget a little in cases any increases right. in prices, um, so we have a little bit of buffer in that account, but we also have the recycling revolving account, right. which uh, we bring in money when we run the special recycle days, or in the past we used to get paid for recycling, which we don't need more, uh, but we do have money left over in that from previous years and also from the special days. Uh, we, we usually try to cover a little bit more than what we pay out to get rid of those goods. So we do have the, re the revolving account, and then we have the recycled line item budget, which then might be a little bit available. So we can look at that and, right. and see what we can do to, to maybe make some adjustments. Right. Okay. Yeah, because it, it, be I, I, I would agree that that, that weight rate, he used to do it for free, and then they were talking about not doing it anymore, so we offered $6 an hour, no benefits, just a per hour pay to just to give them something incentive to stay there or else it's just going to be back to free for all and no organization. Yeah. So he was willing to do that. But that was several years ago and we haven't looked at it since right. now. Yeah. So why don't, why don't we look at what funds are available? We motion that we look to uh, in that budget and, and see what's available and, and look into giving, uh, I don't know his name, but the... Uh, Mr. O'Malley. Mr. Yeah. O'Malley, a, a pay raise down there. We, we look also look at the, the hours of how, how that's operating, you know, to see if that's more flexible for the people. But the more they use it, the more they save. Well, I'm also wondering where you are short a person over there with that new tax abatement program starting up with the seniors, would you be able to utilize more volunteers where the other gentleman hasn't come back to work? At least if you had some extra people on the tax abatement program, would that be a win-win for everybody to, Something to, look at. to help out? Yeah. 
But I thought the other person, Mr. Bear, was coming back. I thought he might see something. That's made. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So the motion was made by a second. So the, is there a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other uh, old or new business? Just one quick uh, item, Mr. Chairman. The uh, last meeting, the board had appointed a delegate for the town to serve on the Neshoba Minuteman uh, uh, board of directors. Uh, they also asked for an alternate in the event that that person is away or not available for a meeting, that there would be a some of a stand-in um, for that person. So I believe I know the board appointed the town treasurer and just asked that they would be willing to uh, Put another slide in there and have budget. But the meeting's are doing today, right? Yeah. yeah. I'd, uh, I'd like to nominate you. <laughs> Mike, if you don't, I, I can be an alternate. I mean, uh, we're looking at only when she can't go, right? Right, yeah. It would be, yeah, either, uh, right. you'll see, you see a lot of times, depending on how involved you want to be, sometimes both people will go to the meetings just to get the information to keep up on what's happening. But for the most part, it would only be voting authority when the delegate is not there. So even with two people going, you still only have one vote. Oh, no. So it would be a matter of that. Um, I, I don't mind slipping in that position. Huh? The schedule I'm on is <coughs> I'm free on days in. I've just went through with some more things. If you don't want it, if you want it, then no, it's up, take it. up to you, sure, either way. I think, uh, just, I think having someone from the selectman's office to keep the board involved with what oh, is yeah. happening on the board for that year in this transition, I think, is important as well. I, mean, I think the treasurer, he's a benefits coordinator, he needs to be involved right. in that, but I'd like to see the selectman's office getting the same information so that this board can keep up on what's happening in this major transition. I'll do that. I'll be the office. Okay, so we'll uh, appoint selectman to that position. Okay, well, thank you. As we all what? What do you wish for? And if Pat can't make it, you darn well better be there. I'll be there. That's right. <laughs> so no <laughs> overtime for you. If you yeah, no, yeah. No details that day. You're coming up. Okay. Uh, if there's no other old or new business, uh, we'll move into committee reports. And Selectman Mendoza has uh, a veteran agent. Yes. If, if Jerry can come up, that'd be Board. great. Mike and I and uh, Mr. Carpenter will be meeting them doing some sort of regionalization for the veterans services because the towns of Berlin, Lancaster, and Boulder have approached us to see if we could perhaps do something to help them out with the veterans day. Jerry, jump right in. Okay, sure. When we gathered, uh, Mike provided us with a copy of the state guidelines for a regional office. It quickly became apparent that a regionalized office was far too complex and in addition to everything else, it involved using one of the selectmen to meet on a combined board, which just puts an additional burden on you five folks for no reason at all. So basically what we came up with was that a loose confederation would be better than a regional office that was formalized. This way, we, for a year, we're gonna try Berlin, Bolton, and Lancaster hiring one person in my office by an individual stipend for those towns. Clinton will continue to get her services and everything will be just as it is now because the people from, quite frankly, from Berlin, Bolton, and Lancaster have been coming in to see us anyway because they weren't getting any services. And the only thing we did was we avoided spending Clinton's monies. But now, under, as of 1 July, if, we, if you approve us going forward with this, we will have the authority to spend those towns' monies for their veterans in addition to helping them with their veteran problems, both them and their dependents. So I urge that you consider this for one year and we'll see how it works. Yeah. What would the cost factor be, Mr. Coppenrath, for the clerk in the office? It's not going to be a cost. Nothing to Clinton. They're going to give her the cost. Berlin, Bolton, and, and Lancaster are going to individually give her a stipend. What's the total cost of the salary? The total cost comes to, I think, $12,100. Is it over $12,000? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, something like that. That the individual towns are going to be providing the stipend to, to that person. And the other thing I want to add, I know Jerry's too uh, modest to say that Jerry's volunteering a lot of time to do this on his own. So I want to yes. thank you for that. My services are going to be on a volunteer basis. He really stepped up to the plate for that. He, so they're getting the bargain of a century. And it's important to know that there is there's a, you know, it's easy to make a lot of veterans, but we don't have a lot of support for them now. In a few more years, we're going to be burdened. 
not, not burden as long choice we're going to have a lot more veterans in our system that we're probably not ready to take and make a look at that not just from a local point of view but a federal point of view yes the iraqi veterans are coming into the office regularly so this will afford us the opportunity to be able to help the veterans locally in the surrounding town so whatever the, the, the board is likely to at least try for a year so you, you're calling it a loose confederation yes Okay, so rather, the, rather than a formalized plan, yeah, which requires all kinds of state guidelines. Understood. So, the, um, Steve, you want to put it in the form of a motion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that, uh, that we, we authorize the uh, veterans to, to and Mike to talk to uh, Town of Berlin, Bolton, Lancaster to go forward with their proposals to uh, help them out with, with the individual stuff. You, you have numbers, so maybe you could put what town is going to be because they vary depending on the town. I try for one year, one year uh, contract you know, to provide services to, to veterans. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Just like to thank Steve and, and Okay. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. As an aside, we have discovered in Woodlawn Cemetery a totally unmarked grave of a Civil War veteran. And we have received permission from the Memorial Service in Washington to place an upright granite marker on that grave, and that'll be done in the near future. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yeah. Any other committee reports? Being none, uh, public comment? Yes, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Robert Kane, as most of you know. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for your efforts tonight with uh, Go on to the public access board with, uh, I guess somebody's not called. And I just wanted to say thank you respectfully. Thank you. Thank you, well, thank you. Thank you gentlemen. All right. Take care. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Any other public comment? Maybe not. Going into uh, three executive sessions regarding contract negotiations uh, with the fire, police, and DPW all under Article 3. And um, after that, uh, signing of the warrants is available. Uh, we have three of them. I'm going to say it's a good hour. Well, fire, I don't think it's going to take any time. We need much more detail because we haven't talked about that a lot. Dennis is supposed to put the stuff on this one. We need a vote to put it in the executive session. Yeah, but I haven't even. You guys need to take a break? You want to I'd like to take a little break. I'd like to take a little break. Why don't we take a quick five minute break and then we'll go into executive session? Shift a minute.